What's up, everybody? This is Trey Biddy with Hogsports.com, H-A-W-G Sports.com. Well, Arkansas coming off of a incredibly, I don't know if disappointing is the word for it. I feel like every time I say disappointing, I hear Chad Morris's voice. It's very disappointing. Anyway, it sucks. You're pissed. I'm pissed. Everybody's pissed. We're going to have Danny West join us to talk a little recruiting here in a little bit, and Curtis Wilkerson is also going to jump in. So we're trading off a little bit with Andrew Ellis since basketball is happening tomorrow. We want to get Curtis – or excuse me, tonight, uh, Monday night. Uh, We're going to get Curtis on to talk a little bit about that. Before we get started, I want to remind everybody there's plenty of ways to watch and listen. You can always tune in on Facebook Live. Be sure to follow the page if you haven't done so already. Also available on YouTube. Throw us a like or a thumbs up on both of those channels. And on the YouTube page, please hit the subscribe button and hit the notifications bell so you're alerted anytime we upload new videos. If you haven't thrown us that five-star review on Apple Podcasts, we would love to have that from you. Say something about the show. Let others know what to expect. Also available on Spotify, Stitcher. Google Podcasts, anywhere else you can think of to find your favorite podcast. And Hog Sports is just $1 right now for your first month at HAWGsports.com. I don't know where to start. 21-19. You know, looking back at it, I feel like Arkansas probably should have gone with Malik, at least at some point, even if they started K.J. Jefferson. That was just one of the problems, though. I mean, K.J. was fluttering some balls up there, you know, just some, from what I hear around behind the scenes and stuff and what we heard from, like, Jaden Hazelwood after the game. It seems like the players all expected Malik Hornsby to start. Now, K.J.'s the guy. But if he's not 100% and, you know, he's doing some of the things that he was doing, the offense is totally out of sync and stuff, isn't, an, isn't a healthy Malik Hornsby a better option maybe than K.J. Jefferson in that instance? Sam Pittman said earlier today that uh, that KJ feels a lot better today. He's got like it's like a clavicle; it's a bruise. It hurts him to throw every time he throws. He's out there gutting it out, but it just he's just not himself. That was one of the problems. Another problem is the team was totally flat. They were flat. I mean, I, I felt like it happened against Mississippi State. You know, Danny West sent me a text. Before the game started, I was like, man, it's dead in here. It's dead. Where's the energy? You know, last year, a guy like Drew Morgan wouldn't have let him do that. He would have gotten some people's, you know what? He would have fired him up. And, you know, I asked Sam Pittman about that today, kind of what he says about it. You know, you've got Bumper, who's a leader. you got KJ, who's a leader. Both those guys are banged up, and it kind of makes them sink back a little bit into their chair you got to have more leaders than two guys. So that was another problem. Uh, the offensive line just did not play very well at all. They didn't make any adjustments that worked anyway. You know, even in the fourth quarter, you know, when they're making touchdown drives, they're going for it on fourth down because they have to. And it's not like fourth and inches. It's like fourth and six, fourth and three. You know, I don't. I just, they just did not come out ready to play. Now, credit Liberty, obviously. They had, came in with a great game plan. You could see their energy on the sideline. I mean, they had something to play for. Arkansas had everything to play for, too, and just didn't show up. Now you, you take Liberty and you put an SEC team's jersey on them and Arkansas plays a different game. I fully believe that. There's a mentality there that cost them this game. Now, Sam Pittman, this is his first non-SEC loss. They've beaten everybody that they've played at a conference, whether it's Texas or Penn State or Rice or whoever. They've had some scares. And this isn't the first time that they've come out and just not played very well. Again, another really slow start for this team. Another problem at the goal line. You know, this do-or-die moment. They've had problems at the goal line and in the red zone and the goal line all year long. They've had problems. And I don't think – I mean, maybe it was a situation where if K.J.'s called in, then he's in. But he wasn't, and I don't think that he got in. But it still should not have come down to that. It should never have come down to that. Defense played extraordinarily well, especially the second half. They gave up like 75 yards in the second half. No points. 
They did what they needed to do. Arkansas out, outgained them 428 to 315, but we've seen that before. You know, Toledo, they put up like 600-something yards against Toledo and scored 16 points or something. Is it time to fire everybody, to blow everything up? No, it's not. Is it extremely – I'm looking for a different word than disappointing. I don't know. I need a thesaurus out, I guess. But I think it's interesting. We've got – most fans are great. We've got some jackasses, obviously, like every fan base. But, like, it's funny the anger some people show. Just like even at me or other media members and stuff. I mean, if those guys weren't clowns, I guess it would piss me off a little bit. But there's some, there's just some clowns out there who embarrass you and me and everybody every time they get on social media. And I guess – the bad part of that for them is they wake up every day and they're they're them every single day. Can you imagine how difficult that would be? Twenty one nineteen. It's a tough non conference slate. But everybody has the right to be pissed. I'm not saying that at all. You have the right to be pissed. Maybe even show your ass a little, I guess, but What's going to happen this week? The only way, like I asked Sam Pittman this after the press conference. I had one guy, this one guy said, I tweeted something. He quote tweeted me and he goes, how come is it? How come it's after five minutes after every win? I see you on YouTube. I, this is how I imagine he talks. <laughs> how come it's after every five minutes I see you on YouTube, but after a loss, you're nowhere to be found. Well, I'm never anywhere five minutes after a game. And I am also there after win or loss every single time. Every single time I'm there, win or lose. Guy also had multiple misspellings. It's annoying dealing with people like that, but it's part of the job. There's a lot of people that would trade with me. I know that. So Arkansas let you down. We'll see what happens. Ozarks Go never lets you down. Ozarks Go is always there. Ozarks Go, for me, has been 100% uptime ever since I've been using them. Go to ozarksgo.net slash hog and click check availability in the top right uh, corner of the page. Or you can call them at 479-684-4900. You're never going to have to replug and unplug your router and all that kind of stuff that you go through, things that just don't work. You know. If you're north of the tunnel in northwest Arkansas, if you're in northeast Oklahoma, you most likely have access to Ozarks Go. But you can go and check availability, see if they're in your area. You can also leave them a note. They offer 100 megabits per second up and down speed, which is plenty fast for most everybody, and 1,000 megabits per second up and down. If you use a lot of internet speed, if you upload a lot of stuff, uh, that's the one to get. But uh, local people, you call them, you need some help on, on something, or have a question, you're going to talk to somebody in this area, one of your neighbors, 479-684-4900. Go to ozarksgo.net slash H-A-W-G to find out more. Stamp of approval with those guys. Kickoff time for LSU is 11 o'clock. I don't know if that got picked up on CBS or ESPN because it was ESPN or CBS when it was originally announced. LSU is number seven in the country. They rose eight spots in the AP poll. Liberty moved up to 19. Not a huge jump for Liberty, up four spots after beating Arkansas. You kind of thought if Arkansas had won that game, they might get back into the top 25. They were getting votes and stuff. But they've got some stuff to figure out. Energy, offensive line getting beat the way they did. And, like, to me it looked like, first of all, Throwing the ball. K.J. was holding the ball too long. Looked just out of sync. Didn't know where to go with the ball sometimes. Um, And that's probably from just not really practicing throughout the week. But even then, he wasn't – like he had time to throw, but it was collapsing on him pretty quickly. Like it was a tight pocket that he was staying in uh, and then would, you know, take a sack or escape and throw or something like that. Some of his balls were kind of fluttering. K.J. usually protects the ball. He takes care of the ball and had two interceptions. One of them was his fault. Running – was just really surprising. Like that Arkansas just could not run the ball, especially early in the game, over and over and over again. Tackle for loss. 14 tackles for loss. That's absurd. 
That's absurd. I just – going into this game, this everybody would call Arkansas one of the top offensive lines in the country, and they struggled like that. And you got to give Liberty a lot of credit. Ole Miss kickoff time is 6 or 6.30. That was announced today. 6 or 6.30, that's Saturday, November 19th. It'll be on ESPN or SEC Network. I don't know where they're waiting on exactly. But that's the first night game in Fayetteville outside of Missouri State. It'll be the first night game. That was another thing that was disappointing. I mean, you've been away for five weeks. You've been away for five weeks. We'll talk to Curtis here in a minute, but Arkansas plays North Dakota State tonight at 7 o'clock. That game is on SEC Network+. Plus. I put a video on my YouTube page where you can, if you're having trouble understanding SEC Network+, Plus, or maybe you just forgot from the last time you use it, step-by-step step instructions on there for you. I know a lot of people are ready to move on to basketball. There's still plenty to, to watch for football, as upsetting as everything is right now. Okay, I think that's everything I needed to touch on. Sorry I'm a little late today. I had some stuff going on. I tried to go vote. It was going to be an hour and a half <laughs> before I found out I needed to just hightail it out of there and I guess wait till tomorrow. Oh, Miles Slusher and Anthony Brown, I needed to touch on that. Both those guys are suspended for the week. They won't play this game. Very upsetting to hear that. And West Avenue, for those who don't know, that's right off Dixon Street. I don't know. Me personally, I think after you lose a game like that, you don't go out. You don't go out on the town. I assume that's – I don't know if that's what they were doing or what, but it was West Avenue. It's right there on Dixon. I mean, it's just an extra kick in the pants, isn't it? Something like that happens. For those of you who don't follow Danny West, you can follow him at Danny West 24-7. I don't feel like I'm bringing the energy right now. Maybe Danny will. He's a Hogs Force recruiting analyst, does a great job. Hey, Danny, how you doing, man? All pretty good. Yeah. It's been a eventful week. But yeah. One of the better Mondays there. you've ever had. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's up there, I tell you. Well, yeah, I mean, um, there's at least been some good recruiting news, Danny. That was timely, was it not? Yeah. I mean, boy, they needed to pick me up and, and certainly got one yesterday. KV on Anderson, for people who don't follow recruiting, and, you know, I'm sure there's several who watch the show and don't really keep up with everything. So let me just tell you, this was a, a big one. I mean, a really big one. And the timing of it is a little bit um, unusual. You know, after a loss like that, everybody's yeah. kind of down in the dumps, and, and rightfully so. But, um yeah, this is a kid they've been on since the first of the year. He's been up here three times, uh, 6'3", 235 out of Leeds, Alabama, a four-star defensive end. I think the world of the kid as a player, uh, as a kid, he's told me for months and months, Trey, he said, I know you're seeing all these picks. I'm supposedly going to Alabama and Oklahoma. I'm coming to Arkansas. He told me that over and over again. I'm thinking, man, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> you know, November 6th is a long way out. We'll see. Lo and behold, he, he stuck with it. He's a man of his word. And, um, I do think Dallas Young, you know, your 2023 cornerback from Gardendale, Alabama, I think he had a lot to do with it and mm -hmm. deserves a lot of credit for it. He, you know, he got the kid on campus with him a few times. And that's big, man. We, we overlooked that stuff a lot, but – Boy, it's handy, uh, especially out of state recruiting. To you know, when you're one of your committed guys goes out of his way to help the next class, I think that that says a lot about Dallas. But yeah, really big pickup, man. It's uh, it, like I said, it was a, a timely addition. Really a, a great start, restart, I should say, to the 2024 class because of course he lost Braylon Russell earlier this uh, fall. So. I think that puts them starting out at number 21 in the country for next year. That's a that's a fine start. You know, we talk so much about their um, inability to recruit big-time defensive linemen. And, you know, I'm the world's worst about it. I, I, almost too much sometimes I continue talking about that. But it is a big deal, man. We mm -hmm. see it every week. 
across college football, those who have them and those who don't. And uh, this is their first one and out of state four star defensive lineman since 2019. Henderson's, so, Henderson's listed at 6'3, 235, Danny. Uh, is he more of like a, a Jordan Dominic type, kind of a, a yeah, edge yep, guy a, like that? Yeah, that's a fantastic comparison. Yep, that's exactly what he is. You know, we've um, we've over the last couple of years kind of transitioned and and calling defensive tackles defensive linemen, and mm-hmm. that's how we categorize them on twenty four seven Sports, and that's what he's listed as. But I think eventually you'll probably see him move to edge rusher and yeah. be uh, be re ranked there, which you know. We'll, probably not have any huge bearing on on his ranking he's still going to be a four star but really really good player man uh danny you obviously were sitting right next to me for the game on saturday you that's popped, always fun yeah <laughs> you popped <laughs> over to uh, uh a buddy of yours and and was tweeted tweeted back at us uh, at our group that the place was dead like the you're yep. talking about the sideline and stuff with the with the arkansas players and everything what did you see with the game on saturday obviously a complete different outcome than what we had expected. A much different outcome. I mean, if you'd have told me that Arkansas is going to get whooped like that up front, that their offensive line is just not going to have any answers for 90 and 91 and 11 on Liberty Mm -hmm. Flames football teams. I mean, no way I would have believed that, but that's sure enough what happened first half. They, you know, coach Pitt talked about it today, how, how much movement they were doing up front and twisting and all that. And, Man, it's, it's shocking, shocking to me because Arkansas has been so good on the offensive line. And, um, you know, they've always been good against teams that do that, or it seems like they have. Coach Pitt talks about it a lot. but And just to go out there and, and get stuffed over and over again, I think it was shocking not only to us, but to the coaching staff. I, I fully believe they thought all week they're just going to line it up and get whatever they want. Mm. And obviously that didn't happen. But, yeah, pregame, it was dead, buddy. I mean – I mean, it just felt lifeless uh, on the field, in the in the crowd, everything. And, you know, that's disappointing, too, because you only get so many home games and haven't had one in a while. So I don't know what the answer is, but I'm, I'm really, really curious to see how they respond mm. Saturday. I mean, it's, it's kind of a gut check time now. I mean, a lot of people talking about you. So, I mean, what are you going to do with it? I've tried to get away from – you just said disappointing, and I, I keep saying it too, Danny, but I've tried to get away from that because I was like, why do I? Why does that word bug me? And it's because that's what Chad said every single week. <laughs> disappointing. Yeah. Very disappointing. Yeah. Well, I can tell you what, that loss was not by design, if that makes you feel any better. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's got <laughs> their – rain even harder. <laughs> Everybody's got their little – their words that they like to say. <laughs> I was told yep. I was told over the weekend that I say okay a lot, like I'm trying to convince myself of something. <laughs> <laughs> Man, we've all got these little quirks, yeah, don't little we? Quirks, yep. and you don't realize it till somebody calls you out yep. on it. So right. it's an eleven o'clock game, obviously this weekend. Uh, I'm not so sure that that's not a good thing after LSU and the environment that they just had in in, uh, in Death Valley to come into maybe <laughs> an arena that's sure. a little more sleepwalk subdued. a little bit. Yeah, sleepwalk a little bit, but. Uh, is there any recruits coming this weekend? Obviously, you're going to yeah. have a few, but what, what what can we expect? Yeah, I don't have my list in front of me. You caught me out and about today, but there will be several recruits. I, I do have a list on the site there. We mm-hmm. It was late last week, so probably buried a little bit after Saturday's uh, game and all the threads that came from that. But, yeah, we're going to continue to, to stockpile names throughout the week. But this week and the Ole Miss game next week should be really – well attended that's the good news i mean kids are still willing to come to campus do want to mention justin uh benton obviously took the he was the lone official visitor this weekend the defensive lineman out of covington Mm -hmm. georgia newton high school committed to uh west virginia since june uh, 6'2 275 seems like he had a really good visit here but you know I, i said it immediately after texas offered three days after arkansas and he's probably going to take a trip there too. And sure enough, that's that's what he plans to do. And then mm. make his. He said he wants to make his final decision in a couple of weekends. So I'm sure West Virginia is uh, really loving their chances of holding on to that guy, right? Yeah, exactly. But, uh, yeah, final decision for a guy who's been committed for several months. Yeah. But um, West Virginia's yeah, coming I, off a, a a bad loss. Also, they lost yeah. 31-14 to Iowa State. Yeah, that's pretty rough. Yeah. Yep, but uh, yeah, it seems like everything went well there. I think they're they're bound and determined to find one more defensive lineman in this mm-hmm. year's class, and I'm all for it. You know, 
again, I talk about it a lot, but that would give you three from the state of Georgia. And I think that's, you know, we'll see if one or two or nine or all three of them pan out. But I think you increase your chances. Uh, a couple of those guys I think are going to be really good. So, you know, that would give you three there and then a couple of defensive ends and uh, Quincy Rhodes and, uh, mm-hmm. and Caleb James out of Texas. So that'd be another deep defensive line class. And, of course, the transfer portal is always going to be there for you. So, um, yeah, that could be the, the icing on the on the cake there for this year's class. I was talking to some potentially. People, I was talking to some people uh, a little while ago, and uh, one of them said the most Arkansas thing ever would be for them to beat LSU, beat Ole Miss, oh no doubt, and then and then lose to Missouri. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I mean, boy, they've been unpredictable, and and so much of that, Trey, in my opinion, is is injuries. You yeah. know, I mean, there's no doubt about it. KJ did not look himself. Right, um, and, and we've seen that several times. You think back, going into the season, man, when we were all making our nine and ten game win predictions and all this. I mean, the caveat was always if they stay healthy. That's yeah. such a big deal at Arkansas. Uh, you know, if you can keep the two number ones healthy, I remember saying that over and over. Well, if they if they stay healthy, ish. I mean, you're going to have injuries, ish. but yeah. the injuries that they have had have been like you losing Catalan. KJ's out there, you know, can't throw the ball. Um, you're been decimated been in the in the secondary bumper pool. Drew Sanders, Bre- I mean, mm-hmm. there's they've had a lot of none of that's any reason to lose to Liberty. No, and no, I know it's, Liberty's it's no ranked 23rd. That may be a reason to lose an SEC game, but um, mm-hmm. there's uh, there's no no legitimate reason or excuse to lose to Liberty. I mean, they're on their Never. third quarterback. That's right. You know? Yeah. And and miss several other guys. You know, I don't yeah. know their roster. Day Day Hunter wasn't even – I don't even think he played that much. Yeah. Yeah, they had a lot of guys out, man. So, uh, you know, I, I watched it live and in person. Wasn't wasn't thrilled doing that. And then I rewatched it again over the weekend. And, mm. boys, I'm kind of just ready to flush it, man, and see yeah. what happens this week. Well, the idea sure – there's a lot too. of people that, like – the media doesn't ask tough questions. Like there are some fans out there who think anything short of us saying, "Hey, have you considered firing everybody?" You know, yeah. <laughs> that's the question that they they want us to stand up in our chair and yell and point uh, yep. angrily and stuff. Like that's that's their definition of a hard question. That's the I get that. Like you came out, y'all don't you ask hard questions a little bit today. I mean, I just ask the questions that are on my mind. And another thing that bugs me a little bit, and the person that posted this didn't, I didn't mean, I'm not directed at him, but um, if you could really say what you want to say, I know you're like, I, I say yeah. what I want to say. You right. know, I don't, anybody who knows me personally knows that I say exactly what I mean <laughs> every yep. time. The yep. only thing I might hold back for, from is maybe, uh, an F bomb or something like that every once in a while. <laughs> and even then you might you might get halfway through it before you exactly. to pump I've, the brakes a I've little bit. I've definitely done that. <laughs> Hope oh, not man. listening. You're doing a good job. All right, brother. I appreciate you coming on and uh yeah, man. look forward to a little bit of basketball tonight. Yep. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that as well. A little All change right. of pace. Yep. All right, brother. All right, man. We'll see All right, you. everybody. That's Danny West. Again, you can follow Danny at Danny West twenty four seven on Twitter. He's a Hog Sports recruiting analyst and does so much more than that. We're going to jump to Curtis now. Curtis Wilkerson, the Hog Sports senior analyst for just about everything. Curtis, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, Trey. How are you? Looking forward to some basketball. Is it basketball season yet? Was what everybody was asking after the game on Saturday. And yes, it is. <laughs> Today is the first game of the season. Yes, it is. It is basketball season. It's kind of crazy. Uh, it's been a long preseason, man. That that foreign tour, you know, in August, that was yeah. pretty cool. Nice change of pace. But, man, just kind of been waiting for this thing to get real for a long time now. Uh, it feels like it's been a month since they got beat down at Texas. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that was only like nine days ago. So, uh, I'm anxious to see these guys play. I'm sure they're anxious to get back out there and, and have a better showing. So, should be good. I'm anxious to see what kind of crowd they get out there. And I know everybody's excited about this team. And, uh, should be the start of a good year. Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think it's interesting how it's shaped up with getting the extra practices, going to Europe, and all that stuff, playing some, you know, some uh, one exhibition game, I guess, in addition to the red white, and then playing Texas, uh, getting beaten badly in that. That's the hopefully wake up call and not what this team is. I don't know if I could take it if <laughs> this team doesn't have a lot of success this year uh, after what we just watched with football. But uh, three games here. All I think are all seven o'clock, like five days apart from each other. Three games, and then it's Maui. So you kind of get the idea that 
Here's three games to get some real good warm up. Bounce back from that Texas game. Implement what you lost. You know what you what you found out about yourselves uh, that you need to improve on in that game, and then take it to Maui and and win that whole thing. Yeah, I agree with that. It's an important homestand. It's interesting how Mus has been talking about that. You know, usually he's a guy that. Uh, is pretty cliche about saying, oh, you know, we take this thing one game at a time and, and we'll worry about the next opponent when they get here. But he said quite often, you know, we've got a three-game homestand and then we go to Maui for three. And so I think he views it the same way. And it's interesting, you know, they have had this longer preseason. They've had more exhibitions. There's a bigger sample size, more practice time with this group. But I don't think he really knows exactly what he has just yet. And that's been kind of the battle with him. That's what happens when you have 11 new guys. There's going to be some consistency issues. Mm-hmm. So uh, I'm going to be really interested to see what that rotation looks like tonight because it matters now, right? I mean, you you know, you know, might get uh, ticked off in the moment in an exhibition and, and bench a guy and try somebody else. And if it's not working, you might go with all 13. Who knows? But I got the feeling when the wins and losses count, uh, we're really going to get a better idea, you know, on a night like tonight of who exactly he feels like he can trust uh, going into the season. And that's probably going to change by the end of the year. It usually does and it yeah. evolves. But I'm interested to see what it's like tonight. You know, is he going to cut it down to seven or eight guys or is he going to play a bunch? I, I don't know. So uh, it's going to be interesting. They've got some kinks to work out before they get to Maui. You're right about these games. Uh, you know, are they going to cut down on the turnovers? Are they going to defend the three better than they did at Texas? Uh, I don't know. You know, we'll we'll see what it looks like. But yeah, North Dakota State's an interesting matchup. Fordham, you know, they come from a pretty good league in the Atlantic Ten. I don't know that they're projected to be, uh, you know, at the top of that thing. But man, it's that South Dakota State game, that third one, that's tough. You know, they mm-hmm. lost some guys, but they won thirty games last year. Uh, they were in Buffalo uh, when Arkansas was there at the NCAA tournament. They look good, so that's not going to be an easy game. Uh, but it, it's kind of interesting, you know, they, it looks like they might take a step up in each one of these games before they go to Maui, and that's what they need because that ain't going to be easy. Curtis Wilkerson joining us. You can follow him at Kurt Wilkerson underscore on Twitter. He's the Hog Sports senior analyst. Helps with everything, even football, basketball, a little baseball, a little recruiting even when we need you, Curtis. Certainly do a good job. Your take real quick before we get back into some basketball discussion on the game Saturday, football. I mean, why are you killing the vibes right now? I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> uh, no, no, I that's mean, enough. Listen. That's yeah, I think it's good. I think we can move on now. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> no, that wasn't fun. And you know, I, I was listening to you and Danny before you called me here, and I, I pretty much agree with everything there. Uh, it felt weird before the game. The the, the vibes were off. The energy was down, um, and it showed. And you know, it was kind of one of those deals where, uh, you know, I continue to think, okay. Arkansas is going to wake up here. They're going to figure it out. Uh, this is going to be an ugly win, but, you know, they'll wake up. They'll sneak by. And next thing I know, it's halftime. It's the end of the third quarter. There's eight minutes left in the fourth quarter, and it hadn't yeah. really happened yet. And, and, you know, so it wound up being a little bit too too little too late there. But, yeah, man, that, that can't happen. It certainly shouldn't happen. I'm going to be really anxious to see how they bounce back from it this weekend against LSU because – well, you have to, you know, I think when things start trending in the wrong direction, you want to get them turned around as quickly as you can. So it's uh, it's going to be an important one on Saturday for sure. Yeah, well, I mean, if Liberty can take it to Arkansas like that, then maybe it can happen the other way around with LSU. It's interesting when you look at this game early in the season uh, against LSU, you know, LSU had like 39 guys on scholarship at one point. You know that? That's, I mean, like they yeah, had a crazy. huge transfer hall, obviously with recruits they brought in, but – I mean, what he's done there, and that's something I I said about the guy all year, is Brian Kelly can coach. You would rather play LSU early in the year versus later in the year when they, you know, they have time to gel and everything. All right, we'll we'll move you off of football, Curtis. I know you don't want to talk about it. Not many people do right now. So, North Dakota State, Fordham, South Dakota State. Anything else we need to uh, to know uh, with this stretch coming up? It, it, it's a seven-game stretch. So it's November 7th, November 11th, November 16th, and then it's Maui. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's important. You know, I think Arkansas, uh, you know, every year they've had kind of that stretch in the season uh, where things really don't look good, and then they flip the switch and they turn it on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, so I think if that happens, then maybe you feel good about Arkansas's chances of, of figuring it out like they have, but – 
it'd be nice if you could avoid it. So I wonder if Arkansas has kind of hit that. You, you mentioned it, wake up call, mm -hmm. uh, maybe early on in that exhibition season, uh, you know, against Texas to where they kind of have more of a sense of urgency. They start playing up to their talent level, which is something Eric Musselman's challenging them to do. Uh, so, you know, I keep an eye on this team's, you know, the, the on-floor chemistry. How does that progress? You know, what, what lineups are looking good together um, out there on the floor? And then just their, their toughness, their physicality, uh, and their energy, because that was what was lacking a little bit at Texas. You know, in terms of the on-paper talent, uh, the length, the athleticism, they have all those things. Uh, but playing with a little bit more edge would be something I'd like to see for them, from them, especially, you know, in front of a home crowd, they're going to be jazzed up tonight. So um, I wonder what it's going to look like. I, I would imagine that we're probably going to see some of the things that we saw, you know, early on last season in terms of, yeah, it just gets a little bit, you know, inconsistent out there at times. They'll have flashes uh, where they look like a Final Four contender. They'll have flashes where the offense probably goes a little bit stagnant. Uh, things get stale out there for a minute and you, you start to moan and groan a little bit. It's that spurt ability, right? That Eric mm -hmm. Musselman loves to use that phrase. And I think we'll probably see some of that early on before it really gets clicking. Uh, you know, hopefully it just comes in wins. Curtis Wilkerson joining us. Curtis has a sister show to Hog Sports called Hog Hoops Live. Curtis, are you doing that this week, I guess? Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, tell us a little bit about tomorrow. it. Tomorrow. Yeah, Hawk Hoops Live, I mean, it's set up just it's pretty similar to what you've got going on with Hawk Sports Live. You know, we'll hop on uh, usually after the midweek games and uh, and kind of break those down and preview what's coming up next. We'll talk some recruiting and, you know, just our takeaways of what's going on with Arkansas basketball. It is a basketball-centered show. So, uh, yeah, it does have its own YouTube page, uh, Hawk Hoops Live. I mean, you can type that into the Google machine, right, and it'll get you right where you need to be. So, um, yeah, so we do that usually during the midweek after those games. Uh, and then we upload some other things onto that channel as well. You know, during the weekends or uh, if I travel to a different venue or whatever, we'll do some live reactions, some stand-ups from there, and that'll go on that page also. So um, it's fun, good show. I enjoy it. I uh, like it to be interactive. So, you know, kind of like you with the questions and comments that people put in the chat. Mm -hmm. uh, like doing that Q&A, that's, that's a fun deal. So, yeah, it's a good show. We enjoy it. We did our first episode uh, of season three. That's crazy to think about, but that was last week. And, yeah, I think we'll probably hop on there tomorrow and do another. So that is the same Facebook page, the same podcast channel, but a different YouTube channel. So you'll need to go to Hog Hoops Live. Search Hog Hoops Live, H-A-W-G Hoops Live, and you can find Curtis's show. Like you said, looking probably tomorrow since it's a Monday game. And then also next week, um, let's see, next week is Wednesday. So I don't know what the schedule is for that if it's Wednesday because I do Hog Sports Live on Wednesday. So – We'll we, figure we it just, out. We'll we might, to have to, we might have to convene here. I don't know. Yeah, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. <laughs> All right, brother. Appreciate you. Yep, sounds good. We'll see you tonight. All right, everybody. That's Kurt Wilkerson. Again, follow him at Kurt Wilkerson underscore. He is the Hog Sports Senior Analyst and just does a great job. Never lets you down. Curtis never lets you down. You know where I'm going. Ozarks go never lets you down. Ozarks Go never lets you down. You can find out more about Ozarks Go if you need internet. It's the 21st century. It's 2022. You should not be having internet issues. You should just It should just work. You should not have, let me call my internet guy. You don't need an internet guy. You just need Ozarks Go. It should work. Ozarks Go, for me, has been 100% uptime. Go to ozarksgo.net slash hog, H-A-W-G, ozarksgo.net slash hog. I'll leave more in the description below on YouTube. Uh, check availability. There's a graphic up at the top you can hit, or there's three bars on mobile that'll bring a drop-down box. Or you can call them at 479-684-4900. Again, I'll leave all that information below. It's 100 megabits per second up and down or 1,000 megabits per second up and down. 1,000 megabits per second up and down, that's, that's instant. Okay, 100 is probably fine for most people. Local company, staffed by your neighbors, Trey Biddy, stamp of approval. Go check out our friends at ozarksgo.net slash hog, H-A-W-G. Questions now, comments. I'm sure there's a lot of interesting comments today. Lane New says, I just don't know what to say today. Coaching was just... I don't know if I can say that word. It's on the players, too. Pittman did admit that he was concerned before the game. Yep. I mean, I asked him about that, about the energy level. 
at the press conference today. Just, and I think he mentioned it. I think he mentioned it Saturday too. But I felt like that way against Mississippi State. It just, didn't, and maybe it's because KJ wasn't out there. They didn't know about KJ. It's just I don't know. Tucker Lloyd says, I'm so sick of coaches saying we got out schemed. Why can't we out scheme somebody? Isn't it on the coaches to come up with some good scheme with good schemes? Yeah, it is. And they've done that against some teams. I mean, there's been teams where, you know, they out schemed or they've been underdogs and they beat. I mean, hell, last year they were underdogs in every SEC game until the Auburn game. And then they got out schemed, I guess. But they out schemed some people then. But man, there's just there's no reason to lose to Liberty. And they're not – it's not like Liberty's a bad team. I'm just saying, like, from a talent perspective, Arkansas has more talent. They pay their coaches a lot more. So they should have better coaches, although we know who Hugh Freeze is. Ben Frost says, what about the, our secondary getting arrested? Yeah, two players. One player who plays a lot, obviously. Upsetting. Zach Isom says, be a good time to bet on LSU to win by 14-plus. You never know what's going to happen. Like we said, the most Arkansas thing ever be to go toe-to-toe with LSU. Tyler Tober says, happy to have the Hogs basketball starting. Is this the most hyped team since 94? Yes. But last year's team might have been the most hyped since before, the, you know, and the team before that maybe. So it's a streak. Michael E. Ashcraft says, Pittman was worried last week with attitude of the team. That's his responsibility to give an attitude adjustment and get their heads on right. I mean, yes, it is. There has to be ownership from within that team, though, too. The players have to take ownership. There has to be a player-led meeting that somebody calls, somebody standing up and being vocal about it. The coaches, yes, they have to do that, but that's part of it. And it's, yes, the buck start, stops with Sam Pittman. If they're not properly motivated, then that stops with him. At the same time, they're missing some guys from last year on this team. And guys who are would be that this year are banged up or are out for the season. You got to get up for these teams. And it's been a problem. I mean, Sam mentioned it with, you know, teams on this level. Missouri State, not up for it. Rice last year to open the season. To open the season, they got off to a really slow start against Rice. So it's been a problem against teams that, you know, aren't in the power five. And they got to get over that. They can't think that they can just roll their helmets out there and play. I mean, and, and just take a win. Let's go out there and run some plays just like we always do in practice. It's got to be more than that. There's got to be strain. You got to play fanatical. There's got to be a level of energy. There's got to be a, I'm going to go make this play. I'm going to be the guy that gets it done. Not somebody's going to get it done. Me, I'm going to do it. Everybody has to have those kind of attitudes. Cedric White says, Pittman needs to emphasize production. I believe he's too loyal, choosing loyalty over production. They've made a few personnel things decision-wise that I, I think a lot of us haven't agreed with. But he's right. It's easy also to sit back after the game or think about it, play after it happens. They're making decisions before the play, and we're analyzing what happens after the play. It's easier to be on our side, obviously. We're not getting $5 million. I like Sam, I, and I know you do too. I know most of you do. Some of you maybe have changed your mind on that. I, I get it. This happens after a loss. I do like Sam Pittman, and I do think that the idea that everything needs to be blown up or he needs to be fired or something is dramatically premature right now, especially in this climate, because you st- you have a start over moment at Arkansas and a situation like you've had going, I don't, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Now I understand there's moments where you have to make decisions like that when it's like, there's nothing to salvage, but you're going to tell me there's nothing to salvage. I don't believe that. When Chad got fired, Yeah, there was nothing to salvage. And I know a lot of that's emotional, knee-jerk. I don't know. Everybody's passionate. I get it. People who are sensible, people who are jackasses, people who are somewhere in between, like most of us. (laughs) I got a little jackass in me. I know that. 
Amazing how the OL played, says Nathan Post. Pittman said they that they practiced against what they were dealing with with the DL movement watching the game. You'd have thunk the OL was unprepared and seeing this for the first time. Yeah, it was not pretty. Alan Hurst says Browse isn't doing any self analysis. We telegraph our run plays on formations and alignment. He adjusts too late, and that's failure. Wilson Wood says, Great question today, Trey. Finally, someone who asked hard ones. I just ask the questions that I feel like need to be asked. Michael E. Ashcraft, good hearing from you, Wilson, by the way, Sheridan boy. Michael E. Ashcraft says, Sam has got to take the bull by the horns. Bottom line, he is the head coach. Yes. Wilson says, How many times has the staff played the wrong players? It's happened. It definitely happened at quarterback against Mississippi State. Dustin Hoofman says, Trey Biddy, do you think early injuries coupled with the bad loss to Texas A&M changed the attitude in a bad way for the players? Yeah, I mean, a loss like that can have a negative effect. You got a lot of new people in here. That's something that I was always asking in the preseason. Danny mentioned, you know, predicting nine, ten wins and stuff, and a lot of people are doing – some even did more than that. But when you look at the team from a talent perspective, compared to past Arkansas teams, you're just like, it's a good-looking team. Everybody who watched would have said that. But you don't know also, what has everybody else got going? Ole Miss brought in 17 transfers. They're probably looking at their team going, man, we look pretty dang good. You know? So, it's to me, it's a, it's a change across college football. And I'm not so sure if that's maybe going to have an impact on, you know, blue blood type programs when other teams are, you know, because that's always been a big difference with like an Alabama versus some other teams is their depth, their ability to just go next, next, next. And Arkansas, unfortunately, hasn't been able to do that, even with the, the talent that they have brought in from the transfer portal because they got banged up so bad in the secondary. They don't have a next quarterback where they can just go, well, this guy, or at least they, I guess they don't – maybe they don't think they do. I personally think that Malik healthy is probably better than KJ in the state that he was at. But other teams probably – I don't know. Maybe they don't feel more comfortable. I don't know. But uh, – it's the what we know of college football has changed a little bit because of the ability to add players quickly from the transfer portal. And that lends to leadership and chemistry also, I think, because you just you lost a lot of leadership last year, you know, and I don't know that you just bring in leaders from the transfer portal. Now, Jaden Hazelwood, some other guys like that, obviously they step into leadership roles right away. Hazelwood definitely did that. But I don't know. I think it's a little bit harder to be the new guy, even if you're an older guy, and come in and assume a role like that and not, you know, naturally do what most people do, just kind of be quiet and feel your way around at first. Zach Issam says, the man is too nice. There's no reason the OC would be making my decision to play a quarterback that's not 100%. That's not actually – he clarified that today, Zach. It was um, – he was asking if he was healthy enough to go, not if he thought he should go. At least that's what he said today. And Pittman that we see at press conferences and stuff isn't necessarily the same Pittman you see on the practice field or behind closed doors. I mean, we say he's too nice, but – I mean, he will fire a coach in a second if he doesn't think he can recruit. Michael E. Ashcraft says a lot of Sam's answers during his press conference today. You could almost see that he regretted some of the decisions that were made by relying on his assistants more than his own judgment. Zach says that's day a day late and a dollar short now. Yeah. Lane New says same situation at quarterback. I mean, and this is something I said too. There's a group of the fans that you'll never get back after losing a game like that, you know. And that's fine. I mean, that's – I don't think there's anything wrong with that. That's who some people are. There's another group. I mean, there's the extremes, right? There's the fire everybody now, and there's the, you know, rainbows and sunshine crowd over here. But somewhere around here, there's a, the group that won't accept that loss ever and you're you're dead to me kind of thing. And then there's another group that says, this really sucks. I'm pissed. I'm not ready to blow everything up. Just don't ever do it again. And that's where most everybody is in those two categories. You can't lose games like that and keep any grace in year three. You just can't. As much as everybody wants Sam Pittman to – achieve 
And again, I know this doesn't mean anything because it's all about what have you done lately, but and I've and I've also said this: the Chad Morris era is not the reference point for Razorback football to compare everything to. You can't say, "Well, look where they just were." However, it wasn't that long ago. That was the eight, the worst eight-year stretch in program history, and the dude won nine games last year, and probably overachieved a little. But they won nine games last year. And there's something to be said for that. That's why I'm probably more in this group right here. That's like, that sucks. Don't do that again. You really only get one. And then a a large portion of these people jump over here. It's just the nature of the game. It's the nature of college football. These guys get paid a lot of money. They're everywhere. There's an instant gratification sense. And... I'm not saying this is not justified that you should feel like you should have instant gratification. I don't think anybody was really asking for a national championship. And the reaction isn't the same when you lose to SEC teams. Even LSU, or excuse me, even Texas A&M. The reaction is not the same losing to Texas A&M. As much as Arkansas should have won that game, they should have. To me, that's a bad loss. That's a bad loss. The Auburn game is a bad loss. Those are the two bad losses in Sam Pittman's coaching career. And now he's got an awful loss. No disrespect to Liberty. I know they're all very proud, and they should be. And they've got a good team. There's a talent discrepancy. And Arkansas is a home team. Lane New says, same situation at QB. We had through the first four or five games with the punter. Loyalty is awesome. KJ is a good QB. With that being said, he should – have been sat after the first half. I agree. He should. They should have probably earlier than that. When he's, I mean, he just did not have the same velocity on the ball. Be interesting to see what happens this week. Michael E. Ashcraft says that's what I said. He tried to sugarcoat it by saying he did practice, but we really know he didn't. Sam has got to quit letting Browles make the final call. Let's see what else we got. Brian Mulder says the basketball team will need to get over the big head stage of a bunch of freshmen that think they are all that in a bag of chips mentality and play as a team, not individually. I think it's, I don't think it's that so much, Brian. I mean, these guys, um, these are good players and everybody deals, you know, everybody has, it's a successful program, has really good players. Players, good players want to win for the most part. And I think it's just a chemistry deal. They just got to continue meshing, got to continue to to get more games, get more practice together. Kagan Gilliam says, what does your roofer think about this team's energy? (laughs) Jackie Price says, watch us beat LSU. It wouldn't surprise me. You got to have a KJ healthy, but yeah. That's the, I mean, that's like at this point, the only way to like for Pittman to get this group back that will never forgive you is to win the next three games. All right. I got a little bit of a late start today. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up, everybody. Uh, Dwight says, please don't skip my questions. Where's your question, Dwight? All right, Dwight says, hypothetical question. What what excitement and talent would be would a coach like Arkansas like Coach Sanders bring at Arkansas? What excitement and talent would a coach like Coach Sanders bring to Arkansas? I think somebody will possibly hire Deion Sanders this year. Maybe it's Auburn. I kind of think that he might have his eye on that FSU job. I mean, it's his alma mater, but I'm ready to see Coach Prime in college football. I mean, in, in, not college football, but in Power 5 football at a big-time program. I w- I'd, like, I'd love to see what he can do. You know, Hunter Juracek talked to him twice when he was during the coaching search. I understand why he didn't hire him at the time, obviously not having any head coaching experience at all, you know. Um, so that was a deal, but he does now. He's got some years under his belt. I think that uh, if it's not this year, it'll be next year he gets a Power 5 job. And I'm anxious to see what that's like. 
You know he can recruit. I mean, he's a huge name. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Appreciate Curtis Wilkerson and Danny West for jumping on, and thanks for all your questions, the loyal listeners and watchers. And um, I'm going to the basketball game tonight. should be a lot of fun. Take my mind off football for a little bit. And, uh, yeah, I got to go practice here in a little bit. So I'm going to football practice here in a little bit and then going to basketball after that. And you can catch me later on Drive Time Sports. Be back with you guys on Thursday for your primer and, of course, the walk and talk on Saturday. Win or lose, I'll be there. And like some people think, this has been Trey Biddy with Hogsports.com. I'll catch you next time. 